and gentlemen, and welcome to this very special edition of Election Question Time, where I'll be asking the leaders of the major parties, and some chancers, questions from our audience members. So, please join me in welcoming... David Macaroon of the Blue Goose Party. Ed Milliweasel for the Belaboured Party. Nick Arm for the Libel Democrats. Gordon Bennett for the Verdant Alliance. Nicola Turbot for the Sausage Party Nationalists. Nigel Garage of Uskip. And Leanne Leek for the Please Keep Clapping Party. Right then, enough about them, and more about me. Our first question comes from Angela Tompkins of Droitwich, who wants to ask, what would be your plans for the first hundred days in office? David Macaroon, I'd like you to go first. Hello, Jeremy. It's lovely to be here, and I'd like to thank all the lovely ladies and gentlemen. Eh? Shut the hell up, you time-wasting oik, and answer the bloody question for once. Well, eh, never. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, thank you, Angela, for asking. The Blue Goose Party made it clear in our manifesto that we would get right back to work re-establishing the economy by creating jobs in the debt collection industry through raising the basic rate of income tax for the great British people to a level that would help the government balance the budget. I think that will only take us a couple of days, and so after that I might go on a holiday to Cornwall and enjoy one of their famous pork pies, yes. Mr Milliweasel, the same question to you. Well, Jeremy, clearly the Belaboured Party have the people of Britain close to our hearts, especially those of you who would like to be voting for us. Now, firstly, we'd nationalise the royal family, as it's high time they were brought more directly under the control of government. Then we'd prioritise revitalising the NHS through a series of carefully targeted tax rises that would only impact on the most privileged in society, especially those who can afford to smoke, drink or wear bow ties. <laughs> Looking at no one in particular. Mr Garage, that doesn't sound like it sits well with you at all. No, Jeremy. I think it shows how out of touch the two big parties are with the ordinary people of Britain. People like you and me, who've worked hard to afford our mansions and enjoy the odd pint or two of champagne down the local gentleman's club of an evening. So what would you, Skip, do with their first hundred days? Well, we'd make sure all those immigrants without a British passport will be shipped off back to Europe. Then we'd close the ports to stop all those great British pounds leaking across the international borders. And we'd burn the big book in the Treasury that lists everyone who we owe money to. Oh yeah, I would introduce a new tax on anyone who pronounces Bath, Bath. Hmm, sound policies for a better nation. Nick, hmm, I imagine you don't agree. No, I most certainly don't, and neither do most members of my party. You see, Angelica, we've learned from being in coalition with the Blue Gooses that you can't trust them to keep ideas of social justice and welfare in mind. But what would the libels do in the first hundred days? Oh, hopefully cozy up to whichever party gets the most votes and, uh, you know, try and become their BFFs for the next five years. Oh, good grief. Right, Nicola Turbot, let's have some sense from you. Firstly, Jeremy, I'd like to thank the WBC for inviting myself and Leanne here this evening to the debate. So it represents the thoughts of the whole of Britain. And secondly, I want to ask you, was David Bumblebee too busy or proud to host tonight's show? Too damn expensive, frankly. And I guess Clarkson couldn't be bothered. So that's why we got you, eh, Jezza? If you could keep your trap shut, Millie Weasel, it's Miss Turbot's turn. Thank you. Well, clearly we will be seeking a coalition with one of the leading parties to ensure that the voice of all SPN voters is heard and respected in the heart of government. We'd also lower taxes on all pork products across the board and ensure that Britain's nuclear arsenal is shipped off to Lincolnshire or somewhere else irrelevant where about three people live and they won't even notice it. Oh, and make sure we get another referendum on the independence question and this time make sure everyone voted the right way. Right you are. 
And last, and probably least, and no one worries much about your party, Leanne Leek. Um, your party's first hundred days. <laughs> Quite, quite. Well, uh, let's thank all the leaders for that question. Um, excuse me, Mr. Alpaxon. Nam. Oh, don't I get a turn? I'm sorry, Mr. Bennett. You verdant are so easy to forget about. <laughs> now, go on, then. Tell us about your tofu and mung bean-powered revolution. <laughs> <laughs> You are a very, very rude man. All I was going to say was that the Verdant Alliance would introduce legislation to stop new house development on greenfield sites, increase the minimum wage to a living wage level, and make strides to restore the public sector through ending austerity measures. It's typical pie-in-the-sky hippie rubbish. Oh, laudable, but, you know, very naive, their idealism. Oh, nothing about immigrants, either. Did I mention they were the main problem? Some of them steal my newspaper every morning, you know. Gentlemen, ladies, if you could shut your beaks for a moment. Macaroon, you in particular. Right. Now, our next question is central in many people's lives, and certainly my accountants, and that's the economy. Hartley Pipkins asks, In the wake of the 2008 banking crisis, it seems our economy still isn't working. How would your party address this problem? Let's turn to Mr Milliweasel first. Ah, oh, thank you, Jazza and Hartley. And I'd like to say to all of you at home that the easiest way to restore our economy and add all this austerity madness will be to paint every bus in the land a cheerful cerise. You mean pink? Call it like it is and be a man for once. No, oh, blow it out, you toupee, Jezza. Right, that's quite enough for you. Let's hear from Nick Erm. Oh! Your mother... Well, thank you, Mr Alpacason and uh, Mr Pippin. Well, it's obvious that the economy just isn't working. And I should know because my chums and I have been trying to sort it out for five years. My, it's a right old mess, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Gosh, you wonder is there anything to be really done about it? Or perhaps we might just say, well, there's an idea that's not worked. Or uh, maybe we could just, you know, try and do something sort of else. Uh, I know that might not be the best way to do something about the thing that you, you know, you asked me about in the first place. But, um... Yeah, quite. So, no substantive answer. Hmm. Uh, not in so many words. Uh, no. If you say so. Mr. Garage, try and answer this one without blaming immigrants, could you? Well, as every Great Britain knows, the economy is in a total mess thanks to the twin incompetence of the last two governments. Neither Macaroon nor Millie Weasel have been able to sort the mess out. And the reason for that is foreign banks, who don't even speak English, taking advantage of the great British pound. They've undercut our trade and frankly tried to steal our economy away from us. So I need to cut our links with them and make sure we only deal with decent banking systems who speak properly, like the Cayman Islands or the US. Forgive me for saying so, but didn't the US subprime mortgage problem kick off the financial meltdown in the first place? That's a very simplistic view, and the British public know it. We'd also boost businesses by lowering tax on beer, so that hard-working men and women can enjoy a pie, a pint and a pipe after a long day in the cotton mill. Oh yeah, I would cut the BBC down so it only produces documentaries about cars and news about village fates. Not this frivolous rubbish about dancing celebrities, idiots making comedy on an evening, or time-travelling mustelids. You cheeky little f- OK, I'm bored listening to you, and I'm sure the audience will agree. <coughs> Miss Turbot, your response to the question? Getting rid of Britain's unnecessary nuclear arsenal will save billions in a stroke, which we can pump into a hemorrhaging public service sector. And dropping the taxes on everyday food like bacon, sausages and whiskey, but raising it on luxury items like steak and bread, will help businesses and everyday folk enjoy life just a wee bit more. So saving money and revitalising business will boost the economy across the board. And do the PCC have similar ideals then, Miss Leek? It's not 
It's not unusual. <laughs> I hate to say it, but that sounds like the most sane suggestion yet. What about you verdants then, Mr. Bennett? Thanks for not forgetting me this time. Don't push your luck and just answer the bloody question. Right, well, uh, in a nutshell, what- And you'll know a lot about nuts, don't you, Gordon? Mr. Billy Weasel, if you do not cease interrupting, I will be forced to choke you with the nearest available bacon butter. Is it my turn again yet? I feel I've not had the opportunity to speak for belly ages. Almost, David. But I, I believe it's time to let the nutty green woman finish off her kelp-based economics lecture first. Where was I? Um... Oh yes, uh, we'd bring in a Robin Hood tax, and this means the top 1% of earners in this country would pay more of their fair share. We'd also nationalise Robin Hood himself, which means that every film or TV show that makes use of him would have to pay the UK government a big lump sum that we could use to make more TV shows about badgers. Yay! Well, that makes more sense than your last suggestions. Right, uh, who haven't we heard from? Oh, oh, Mr. Macaroon, how would the Blue Gooses pull the UK's economic head out of its deficit arse over the next five years? Let's face it, the economy is about lots and lots and lots of money. And who is the best person to trust with money when you hit a crunch? Is it some red weasel who'll give it all to the poor? Or a bow-tied nutter who wants to send back all those hard-working migrants who've kept our National Health Service working for pennies a day? Oh, no, 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 no. No, you give it to people who've already got pots of cash themselves and are used to hiding it all away somewhere nice and warm and uh, until they retire somewhere, yes. I'm not sure you've answered the question. Well, I'm, I'm not sure there's an answer. Fair point. And thank you to all. It's time for our last question from uh, Kevin Elbow, and it's one I think you will show as a true test of the leader's characters. So each of you, what is your perfect Sunday? Mr. Arm, you first. Well, Mr. Armpit, thanks for the question. I think it's a smashing one. Now, I live in Sheffield, and hence I like to go out to the Peak District, miles and miles away from anyone at all. And then I, I get out my little hand mirror, and I, I look into it, and tell myself over and over again that somebody still loves you! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Your answer is sure. Turbot, give me your answer. I rarely take a Sunday off. But when I do, I like to just spend it with my family, sharing a delicious meal of all the local food and vegetables. Some roast sausages, and a nice drop of the old Highland mist. That sounds delightful. Mr. Bennett, I imagine so for you it's sitting in a pot of compost and seeing if you can lay an organic egg or something. No, actually, um, you see, I take a walk I through just the don't forest. don't care. Miss Leek, how's that Sunday for you? Gold finger. He's the man. <laughs> ha! Well, that is, sensibly, the most sensible thing you've managed to articulate all evening long. Mr. Macaroon, I imagine even Prime Ministers get the day off on a Sunday? Not often, Jeremy. Now, Kevin, my perfect Sunday involves watching the Sunday morning political shows. If myself or members of my party are on, I like to lead my whole family in cheering huzzah every time I speak and booing every time one of the Andrews asks a stupid question. If Millie Weasels, or one of the other ones, is on, uh, will we just have a good chuckle at their efforts to try and look important? If I'm down in the country, well, I just like to go and laugh and uh, some of the local peasants from atop the height of my muddy bin. Sounds positively bucolic. Mr. Garage, is it down the Great British Pub for the Great British Pint for you? I'm sure the ladies and gentlemen in the Great British audience will all agree there's nothing like a roast and a pint of real ale or five to set your Sunday off on the right track. And frankly, anyone who disagrees is probably an immigrant. After that, I like to get around the piano for an old-fashioned yes. diesel. Yes, Mr. Millie Weasel, what have you to say about Sunday? Look, Jeremy, what has this stupid question got to do with showing which of us is the right leader for the UK? Or that our party has the best ideas about how to govern Britain? Not a lot. But as a WBC programme, we have to incorporate some light entertainment into every show to keep the viewing audiences up. So answer the bloody question, or I fetch out Claudia Winkleman and... Anything but the Winkleman! She's history's greatest villain! Okay, okay. My perfect Sunday would have to be the family all sweating together over a thousand-piece jigsaw. Uh, of the blue sky. 
I always had the family that jigs together, um, saws together? No, no, wait, I didn't get this right. Uh, the family who puzzles together, pulls together, yes. Uh, oh, I don't know, Jeremy, uh, Team Happy Warrior forgot to brief me on this question. Can I have another go? Certainly I not, you silly weasel. Well, that is indeed all we have time for. So I'd just like to finish with thanking our audience for listening and asking the questions. And to our seven leaders, Mr. Macaroon, Mr. Garage, Mr. Millie Weasel, Ms. Bennett, Ms. Turbot, Ms. Leek, and Mr. Uh, um. And it's good night from me, Jeremy Alpaxon, saying, I bloody well hope next time there's less political parties to have on this show. Good night.